everybody. I feel like I say this every time, but I'm really behind with things. <laughs> I've just had so much going on um, in the past week or two. I mean, I've been in the past two weeks, I think I've been to Hazemere Motorcycles six times for various different reasons. Anyway, today I want to talk about rotary tools, cheap ones, you know, like Dremel versus the other brands. I'll get in onto that in just a second, but I had this arrive and I have no idea what it is. Uh, that's the PO box, if you didn't know. There is, there is kitchen roll. There is more kitchen roll. There is some more kitchen roll. What is that? That's some soft jaws. Okay, I've just folded the top down so you can't see this dress. Hi Spicy, I thought uh, you may be able to use these. Uh, I've seen you use two wooden blocks um, as soft jaws. Yes, these, these, look, look at them. Um, there are reasons I use wooden blocks uh, for some jobs, like if I'm welding something I don't want to damage soft jaws, but there are jobs where I need to just hold something and these aren't ideal. And the more that I weld on them, well the more they get and drill on them, the more they get corroded away. Corroded? Eroded? Um, <clears throat> I had a clear out the other day and found them at the bottom of my toolboxes and I knew who could use them. I reckon so. Keep up the videos in the metal works, I particularly like that dragonfly that's a work of art, my friend. Thank you very much. And it now belongs to someone else because it has sold. If I'm ever down your way, I'll give you a look. Uh, enjoy the jaws, buddy, and hope uh, they are of some use to you. Regards, Damaged Daddy. Let me have a look. Some strong tape. They're a little bit long for the current vice. Um, but I think they will fit the new one. Let, oh, yeah, let me update you with that as well. So this is this is gonna be a bit of a sort of a chitty chatty update video. I know a lot of you like those sorts of videos. Um, the vice, if you remember my vice snapped in half, uh, my eBay job one. Well, basically, to bring the story up really quickly, I asked for a replacement. They said, "Oh, I'm very sorry about this has happened. Could you possibly give us the particle of eight pounds to help us with the postage? We're a small company. Yada yada, Chinese." Yeah. Um, it's what they always do apparently, it's this pandering thing. Anyway, well they went on and on sort of saying, okay, well five pounds, no, I'm entitled to a replacement. Okay, well then three pounds, no, I'm entitled to a replacement. Okay, two pounds. Bounds and fours, lots of arguments. Then they tried to say that I'd, ha oh, you'll have to return the vice to us then, and that's going to be very expensive for you. And it's like, no, that's your deal. Your thing's broken, you can pay to get it returned. So in the end, I got eBay involved. That then helped push them to send me the new vice. Uh, however, the amount of time that eBay could step in um, had almost come to an end. So I thought, well, I can wait a couple of weeks for it to arrive, and basically went out of my mind. By which point I was reminded about it by the fact that uh, eBay contacted me and told me that they could no longer step in because it, you know, it was like all the time that they could give had been done, which is a bit. Crappy because it's like well, yeah I haven't actually I haven't I don't know the answer as whether it's resolved or not because the guy hasn't actually sent me the new vice yet. Well, they say they have and they say that they've done it via ordinary mail, which can take up to forty to sixty days. <laughs> so they may very well have sent me my new vice, um, but it just isn't here yet. And if not, then they've just said they have and they're not sending it at all, which I'm probably guessing is more likely. So if a vice turns up, I'm going to be amazed, but uh, I do need to get another vice. So if it doesn't turn up in the next, you know, few weeks, I'll be buying another one. Um, but obviously they would still be useful because I can clamp the thing between them. It doesn't really matter that they slip up and down a bit uh, for the jobs that I really need things held securely and softly. So thank you is handy. Okay, I think a lot of you know where this is going to go. <laughs> ye ye oldie Dremel, uh, you, well it's not ye oldie, it's only about seven months old. Um, as you can see it has no labels on the side of it because I had to take them off. The story of this drum, I bought it, it came in, a, in, a, in, in this box uh, with a little tiny box of accessories, you know, for like 40 quid I think it was. Um, and I've been using it, and it's been great. You know, a lot of people say to me, you know, oh, Dremels, they always break, they just break. And, yeah, I was kind of expecting it to do it. Uh, this one is known, this is the 3000, I think. This one is known particularly, zoom in a bit. This one is known particularly for uh, an error with a winding on the motor or all the, the, the 
windings that basically comes undone and it stops it working. Well, that's not happened with mine. However, what has happened with mine in this time is that I think at some point a metal filing got into this switch uh, because at one point it lost its variable control and it just became on or off at about this point in the middle. Uh, that was only after a few months, but I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll just keep using it um, and if it completely breaks, then I'll get it replaced. I've got a 12-month warranty. Um, that mysteriously got back to working on its own at one point. Uh, and so, you know, everything was well. Then, at uh, some point during the Metalworks videos, you saw it welded itself on about there, because I can feel the lump. Uh, it sort of welded. Uh, the, the potential on the switch, something got in there and it sort of went... And it, stuck solid. Well I broke that free and then it was, what was it doing? It was running for 100, like 100% 100 power um, at zero. So I took it apart uh, and when I took it apart I noticed that the button which had started to become a little bit, because it's basically the way you undo the chuck on these is you press a button here and then you undo this chuck and it, it hold, the button holds the spindle still. I noticed it wasn't gripping quite as well as it could be um, and when I took it apart I noticed it was a bit worn and when I put it back together for some strange reason even though I put it back together in the exact way that it came apart that button was obviously protruding a bit more and that's what was making that noise when I turned it on and it basically wore the pin completely out which makes changing bits on it very difficult <laughs> So during that time it was like, no, I just need to get this Dragonfly done. I can't have a delay waiting on tool, so I ripped the thing apart. I don't, oh no, I had to do that anyway to fix this. But then I had to rip it apart again. Um, I removed the button entirely and now all I can do is shove something down in the hole, like a screw, um, and try and wedge it so I can undo this and put a new tool on. So obviously changing a tool is massively annoying. So my experience with Dremels, they seem quite nicely made, but they break. Everyone says they break, they just seem to break. Uh, and they're a little bit, well, they're quite expensive generally. This is the sort of an entry level one, uh, about 45 quid or something like that. And as I say, it literally came with this and a few little tools. It's, I've got the collar bit that goes on you change tools with. But the thing is, I was like, I need to replace this, but I can still use this one because, like, there's one main tool that I use on a Dremel more than anything else, really. So I can use that on this permanently and just leave it on it. So I'll have, you know, I can switch back and forth without switching tools. So I bought another one and I was like, well, I'm not going to buy another Dremel because what's the point? The quality of them is rubbish. So let's try something cheap uh, and see how it compares because I have a suspicion that it's going to be, you know, just as good. This kit, which I got off Amazon, only cost. 30 quid, I think. Might have been slightly less than 30 quid. And you get stuff, the instruction manual. Uh, you get the actual thing itself, which, I mean, it's. Where's, where's the Dremel? It's a little bit bigger than this Dremel. It's 135 watts. I've, oh, I've got none of the labels left for this, so I don't know anything about it. That's kind of annoying. No, actually, hold on. I'm going to go on the internet and I'm going to find the specs for it. Oh, while I'm just trying to find this and struggling with my internet, uh, you remember I mentioned I was going to try and do some live stuff. Well, I did manage to get the internet in here. That's not a problem. But the only thing I can get it in here on is a little uh, Windows notepad thing. And I'm just not sure that's going to be powerful enough to run a live stream with a webcam because it barely can run itself. And the rain's back. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, right, so this Dremel, my one, is the Dremel 3000, as I thought. It was, or it is currently, it's now 35. So it's come down a little bit in price since I bought it, for the looks of it. Control rotary speeds from 10,000 to 33,000. This says 10,000 to 32,000. So this is a little bit slower. 130. 30 watts, this is 135 watts, so it's uh, so technically this is a little slower but a little bit more powerful, I assume. So what, more torque, less RPM? So yeah, that's basically it, but I mean this feels like, hold on, we can do the test. Feels, it feels a bit crunchy, so it's probably fiberglass reinforced. Yeah, it's definitely got that. It's got that crunchiness to it. Um, Yeah, that sounds similar. And then it's got the, the over-moulding, you know, the rubberised over-moulding on it, which, yeah, whatever. Um, ergonomically, ergonomically, I'm not, you know, this kind of made me laugh, right? So you hold these like this. This is how you'd want to hold it, right? 
where your thumb goes over the vent and where your fingers go over the vent. Well, not quite so much on that side. But if you try and hold it that way, it feels wrong because of the shape of it. And then it's blowing hot air into your hand anyway, and then it's coming up the top. So there isn't really any way of holding this other than like this, that you're not getting the heat coming out in your hand or blocking the vents and then you could burn your motor out. I mean, I wonder if that's how people burn these out so easily. They have them on maximum, cover up the ports, and it's just cooking itself. This feels like it should be held kind of like that. Vents out the front, vents out the front, my hand isn't touching it. Uh, and there's some vents on the back as well. It is a little chunkier. It hasn't, this is a little slimmer at the end. It's like, you know, you can almost hold that like a big pen. This feels a bit heavier. But yeah, um, very basic, you know, speed control on the top and then an on off switch. So rather than being like, you know, you always start off at zero and you go this you just set it in a speed and turn it on and off. Same sort of button press mechanism for doing that. Seems to work. This collar doesn't second as a uh, as a tool for doing this, which is interesting because Dremel do do that. The, the, the neck collar you can take it off and use it as a chuck key. Or whatever. Um, oh, right, so yeah. So what else you get in here? You get that. Another one. It's a different shape and one shot all white. This is like some router depth thing, it's so you can basically set a depth. You attach this onto the end here, and you can set a depth and then go nee, nee, nee. So I guess you could engrave with it on wood actually. If you get it at just the right height, you could be like nee, nee, follow a line. It's a bit cheap and plasticky, but it's it's a is it ABS C type stuff? Certainly harder than standard plastic, so yeah, I'm guessing some sort of ABS. Um Oh, maybe this maybe this is the handle. The second ring is for attaching the handle. So now your hand is completely separate. And you can... I mean, yeah, as a drill, maybe, I can see why you'd want that. So you can push it straight, but generally for work... I don't know, it just feels a bit out of the way. But, you know, it's an extra accessory you get. Don't get that with a Dremel. Do you know what else you get with this you don't get with a Dremel? A flex lead. Right, should you plug these both in and have a listen? There's a point, which one's got the longer lead? They've got, the same, they've got the same length lead, which is, in my opinion, still a bit too short. Anyway, this works, but it's a bit like a speedo cable. You pull out the core, undo the chuck, put it into the chuck, then, sorry, and then you screw it on. And it's gonna twist the whole core. God, slippery snick. Okay, so basically, this is, is this gonna focus? Focus. So as you can see, that's a normal chuck end, like what was on, what well, is in there. So when this turns, this turns, and then so you can have this hanging up by its hook next to you. Neck finger by its hook. And you can do much more detailed work without um, having the whole thing in your hand. Now I do wonder how much torque you lose, because obviously this is connected directly to the motor. If it, you put it on something hard, it's going to have all that torque. With this, it could just twist the cable a bit, so you're going to have stall-out issues on this, and I wonder how quickly that's going to come in. Um, I shouldn't have attached this yet, because I wanted to have a little listen. Okay, so the Dremel, it does have a tool on it, but it's light, so it's not that much difference. Variable, yep. Yeah. So we start out at one, there's a switch underneath, it turns it on. Okay. This feels more powerful and talky. Like when you turn it on, it go, it really gets that jump, whereas this doesn't so much. So it's just a very slight and this part of the switch, I don't know. Um so comparatively, the tools themselves kinda need to do a stall test on it, don't I? Hold on. Oh god. So here's a question. We all know Dremel's rubbish. Who makes the best hand rotary tools, electric ones? Because I mean, I guess the bit, I guess when you want to get a, a high-end rotary tool, you go air-powered generally. 
Um, what we're going to use, I've decided I'm going to use this uh, die grinding bit and some mild steel 6mm bar. Of course this changing the tools is a little, little awkward for the Dremel. <laughs> but you know, it broke. I'm not sure if you can buy the, um, the replacement buttons or pins or something, it's just ugh, poorly engineered. The metal that they use is uh, quite clearly a softer steel and the, the spindle in the middle which has got the marks on it that the pin's supposed to like push into is obviously hardened steel it seems. Anyway, let's try out the Dremel on this 6mm rod. Zoom in. Right, I pushed hard, I kept pushing, I didn't really feel it stalling, it kept its torque and just ripped through that. I wouldn't want to push any harder than that because, you know, the tool couldn't really, the die grinding bit will probably bend. So, for all its problems, the Dremel is still pretty strong and this is the actual tool that I'll be keeping in that because it's good for the job um, and it will just, you know, I can leave it in there and that means I don't have to faff around so much. Okay, so now let's try the other one. Straight into six, turn it on. Chuck let go. That doesn't seem very well balanced. But it's not very well balanced, that's why. Oh, it would appear that this is actually bent. Um that's interesting. I need to get some new die grinding bits then, because that was my favourite one. This one's slightly different shape, but it's got about the same diameter and the same sort of cut on it, so... On. That's the speed. A-OK. -okay. Torquey. Didn't give up. Uh, it's actually done a deeper groove than the Dremel. Maybe it's because it's a slightly sharper bit, to be honest, but... It's, it didn't give up in, under pressure. Um, so that's good. I did worry it was going to stall out too quickly. So, so far it's cheaper and you get more things. I haven't even gone through everything in the box yet, but I wanted to just, I really wanted, I really wanted to try these things out. Uh, right, let's. Okay, so we've got the flex lead attached now. I'm now going to put in this. Uh, you obviously have to stick something down in here. Oh, hang on, there'll be a tool for this. Surely. There is something that's... Yeah, that's it. It's a, uh, a, a round Allen key, basically. Yep, that's it. That's the thing. So then... Right. As I say, I think this thing is going to stall under pressure. But let's see what happens. metal filings in my hands. I still have a few left over when I was doing the dragonfly. The person has their dragonfly sat in their room and I still have bits of it embedded in my skin. Uh, impressive. Ah! There's more on me, that's why I have a... Right. Pretty impressive. Uh, didn't lose torque. I think it held on to the bit nicely. Maybe it stepped out a little bit. Might not have done it tight enough. Uh, but that's actually super handy. Um, I think it would be better if it was hang upside down and you've kept this cable as straight as possible. But you really can put the pressure on and I didn't have feel any, any give up in torque. So I was wrong about that. 
so that leads us then on to what else comes in the box. Now, as I say, this is about double the selection you got with the Dremel. Yeah. Okay, so you've got the chuck tool, you've got a sanding drum. Oh my God, will someone make some of these that actually don't break in two minutes? And I uh, get through so many of these. And then you buy kits like this, okay, cheap kits of sanding drums, and they don't last as long as standard sanding drums, like the Dremel ones, but they're like 10 times cheaper, and if you get, you know, if you use three rather than one, you're still doing all right. Uh, however, they only give you like a couple of these each, and these just don't last, so I've got, yeah, I've got to try and get some of these separately, maybe. Anyway, uh, a selection of different little grinding stones. These are all basically useless to anything other than plastic and stuff like that. Uh, if you use them on metal, it is most likely just going to erode the file down more than anything else. But that's, there's a good selection there, you know, for some things. Uh, a little arbor for the polishing wheels. Uh, a little holder for some cutting discs. You get a little baggie of probably, I don't know, 20 odd cutting discs, only little ones. Uh, about a mil thick. You then get a small ball-ended die grinder, a small ball-ended diamond um, file, a small drill, a small pointed diamond file type bit, a longer Um, what is that? Just, just in case your brain isn't picking up what the issue is here. <laughs> that drill bit's, um, well it's not, it's just a piece of scrap metal basically. <laughs> oh well. Um, this is a little disc, a wire wheel type thing, uh, made specifically for firing pieces of steel at you. Uh, that leads me on to, yeah, something else quickly in the middle of this. Sorry, I know this is long and chatty. In this kit that I got from a subscriber of mine, very kind in sending me this because it allowed me to try different tools, try different things, and have lots of different things on hand. Um, I was using these wire brushes and found them to be absolutely fantastic for some of the things I need to do. So I went and bought a box of them, and it was like um, 10 quid, and you got loads of them and actually they're not too bad yeah they do fling apart a bit but not quite as bad as as these ones even though they look you know identical they they do seem to last a little bit better than the ones you get given for free super handy for cleaning little nooks and crannies and things that you know you want to keep and you can choose the hardness of the the metal you're doing it with so you don't damage the um the base metal you know there's a selection of sanding drums, um, a little stone of some sort for some reason. I don't know what you're going to do with that stone. It's a sharpening stone of some sort. Uh, and a extra collet that basically goes inside here and allows you to hold onto the things. So the Dremel, you know, like 40 odd quid, you get a couple of tools with it which are the same quality of these to be honest with you um i found anyway uh, the best thing if you're going to get a dremel is to get doesn't doesn't look like it should do but one of these kits uh is quite cheap for whatever for all the things you get in it uh it means you have lots of things you're very rarely going to use but it also means you get to find the tools that you find most useful for whatever you're doing which is again this was super handy for the stuff in here i may not touch for a while but when i do i might be like that was the perfect tool for the job Really appreciate that. And if you notice, this is made by the same company that make this. It seems a bit like an Amazon special. Tack life. But I've used a few of their tools. I've got um, uh, this. Is this? A, yeah, this is a Tack Life Auto Punch. And actually, it was like with some step drills. This came, and it was only like eight quid for the step drill um, drills and and this. And nicely made. Piece of kit, very useful, auto punch. Basically you just press this onto metal and it goes clunk. Um, like so. And it puts a little centre punch mark. Anyway, so as I say, 35, 40 quid, very small selection of tools, and you just get the machine. Or this one, which is a bit bigger, seems to be just about as powerful. Uh, you get the flex lead, which I think if you've got one of those for a drum would be 
very expensive. I wonder if it fits on... Uh, yep, it fits absolutely perfectly. <laughs> so, you know, it's not like they're using the same measurements for a reason or anything. So you get that, which is, that's very handy, and I'm going to be using that a lot now. I've realised I don't lose all that torque like I thought I would. You get a load of, a load more uh, bits with it, including special drills, you know. they. Yeah, that shows the cheapness. But, so yeah, they're actually very comparable. How long this is going to last compared to the Dremel, I don't know. But, you know, the Dremel isn't exactly a benchmark of quality, is it? <laughs> Uh, Dremel, if you want to send me some of your tools to prove that this wasn't a complete... Yeah, um, so it may be something a bit more higher end. Go for it. I'll let people know what I think of it. Honestly, openly, you know. I'll put a link to both these tools uh, and the accessories and stuff. There's Amazon links in the uh, description. So the Dremel, it, it did last me well. You know, people say to me it's an absolute piece of rubbish. It's, no, it's a fantastic tool. It really is. If... This was better designed, you know, the, the, the mechanism of stopping the spindle, and if uh, if it wasn't so finickety with the switch, maybe. But build quality-wise, it's it's good, but it doesn't feel any better than this, and this was considerably cheaper when you consider all the other bits you got with it. So make of that what you will. Uh, one last thing before I go is oh no, well oh, avalanche. is I'm going to be trying something soon. Um, I might do videos on this, you might be interested in seeing them, but I'm actually waiting for some moulds to turn up first. Uh, basically, it stinks. Can you guess what it is yet? Clear casting, reddit, clear casting resin, hardener, pots for mixing and stuff. Basically, this is clear casting resin, which allows you to pour it into a vessel of some sort, and it will set like clear plastic very hard um and you can you know you can suspend stuff and i'm sure you've seen paperweights but that's exactly what i'm thinking paperweights things that can go in paperweights paper, possibly things mounted or suspended in resin um it's something i want to try out this is the first time i've ever tried this i've done a lot of research this is one of the things that i do i do massive amounts of just research and looking into different things through videos and different people that really know what they're talking about to learn, so I have a you know a wider knowledge, even if I've not done these things. And it also means that when it when I'm coming to solve a problem, I know of other solutions other than things that I have. You know, like well, casting resins and silicons and, and making moulds and all that sort of stuff. Never done any of it, but I'm in a much better position now that while I want to do something like it, I know all about you know the different things you can do, the different equipment that can can and can't be can can well is needed but you can try and do without like a vacuum chamber or a presser chamber i don't have either of those but i know if, you know techniques you can try and get the bubbles out um i'm just to so say this one i'm going to experiment see how it goes if i manage to get something out of it that's nice i might sell one or two of them um but otherwise this is just practice uh, this kit you can also get on amazon i believe it was on amazon um if it wasn't it might be on ebay actually no no it was amazon it was amazon i'll put a link to this as well uh, this is about 16 quid it gives you a kilo i think it is so a liter no, hang on, that's, that can't be right, because this is, this is not water. Density doesn't work like that. Uh, it is a litre of it. Maybe more than a kilo. Basically, water weighs one kilo per litre, and um, fuel is about, what, about 77% the weight of water. Again, information I really don't need to know, but it's just, yeah, it's handy to have it there. Also, water is, is most dense at four degrees. So there you go. These are... This is so long, it's kind of like a podcast at this point. Um, I always consider doing something like that, just sort of, you know, a long sat down chatting video, but I think one person doing that alone can get quite boring. Uh, unless they're good at keeping keeping things talking, I have lots to talk about. Where, where I'm being so busy and I haven't talked to you guys about the networks much, I've always got lots to talk about. So maybe, oh, maybe I will do something like this from time to time. Um, I know some of you, like, if you're working at home or you're getting a bit, but oh god! Just don't fall. I know some of you were like doing college work or uni work or just sat trying to go to sleep or anything or just bored for a bit. Stick it on the background, do your housework. It's interesting to talk to. You missed a bit when you're hoovering, by the way. And you, you know that's due in this week and you haven't done nearly enough writing. Oh, um, I will give you a sneaky peek because you are this far into a video that I guess most people won't be. 
Okay, so, can you tell what it is yet? Can you tell what it is yet? I haven't got any legs to put on it, or wings. I'm basically going to try and make a mini dragonfly, but do it really quickly. Um, so if I could reproduce these, I can, you know, they, they might be much more basic, not nearly as artistic as the big dragonfly, but as a little sculpture thing, uh, I want to try this out. Uh, these are cheaper bolts. These are, I knew, normally use stainless steel A2 for everything, but I can't weld that. So yeah, a combination of that and Edward Perkis. Perkis, see, I got your name right this time. Terrible. Remember, if you saw one of the pre previous videos, he sent me a load of stuff. Well, I've realised these are going to be perfect to weld on here. Is maybe his legs. Um, I'll have to have a little sort of a, a sort through and see if this will work. But I'm tempted to do that. But as always, I need to make clocks, and I haven't done. <laughs> haven't done. Oh god. I've actually, uh, I've got two clocks available now. I haven't even managed to put the four onto my um, my like, Instagram and that to show them, because uh, I've already sold two of them. There's only two left, so I need to add those on, but when I add on, two of the four are already sold. Uh, which is great, you know, it really is great. But I need to get on and make some more. But life is hectic, life is busy. Today is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday. I'm gonna get a bit of work done today. Bit of work done tomorrow. I've got editing I've got to do, and then Saturday we've got stuff we need to do. When's this going online? I don't know. I'm not going to say where or what we're doing, um, but there's, there's good stuff going on. Uh, but it's just going to keep me busy again. So, the support of you guys through the keychains and stuff, um, and the stickers is amazing. Thank you, and the clocks, and PayPal, and all of the ways and people sending me stuff. It's it's really is amazing. I just wish there was two of me. One to do all the businessy paperworky side, and one to do all the creative talking and, you know, doing stuff. But unfortunately, I am one man. It does half make me laugh when these channels that have got like, you know, ten people running them go, we've been online for this long, and we've made a thousand videos. And I'm like, I've been online for like six, seven years, and I've made over 1,200 videos by myself while doing a full-time job or another job that was nearly full-time and now self-employed so the fact that i've managed to produce that much content that hopefully it's not all garbage you know there is there is generally a thought out process behind it apart from somebody else which uh, i couldn't think of anything that wasn't non-politically correct <laughs> retarded shall we say um so, yeah, but thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like. Um, if you actually got this far through the video, please just slip in a fish name somewhere. Let's go old school with this for people who actually watch videos. Slip in a fish name in your comment. And I'll catch you all next time. The sculpture is just delayed. I've got ideas I want to do with it, but I really do need to be doing other things at the moment and clocks and stuff. But I will get to doing that. I will. I will. I promise. I need to. I want to. Tell you what, it did tug on my heartstrings selling that dragonfly, packing it up, sending it off. It was like, uh. But then, that money coming in, oh, it, it was so good to have a lump of money come in like that. Because, you know, normally it's dribs and drabs and spits and spots, and it's just so nice to have a bit of a relaxed weekend knowing that, you know, done well, done well. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please check out the links in the description and all the different ways you can help support the channel. Any help is greatly appreciated.